Hello everyone, welcome to Mohit Agriculture Tutorials. My name is Mohit Gupta, as you all guys know, and today's video is on the topic viruses. Right? In our previous video, we have talked about what is a bacteria, what is the cellular morphology of a bacteria, and how does it work. Right? So in this video, we are going to talk about how does viruses and what are viruses. Very first question arises: What are viruses? What are their cellular morphology? After once we have read what are viruses, we are going to talk about why and how the viruses used to transmit diseases to eukaryotes. Especially we will talk about bacteria because bacteriophage is a special kind of uh, we can say organism in planet earth found in planet earth which is uh, actually uh, transmitting diseases to specifically to bacterial cell. So we'll talk about how does viruses work and how does they transfer or transmit diseases to the genome of any bacterium, right? To understand the processes, you must go to the genomic depth of this topic. So we'll talk about operonic model also, how does gene activates, what gene activates which lets the viruses to transmit diseases to any bacterium or any eukaryote, that doesn't matter. But the main thing is that the designated problem is that that how viruses work if we tend to understand this then human molecular genetics would be very specifically very easy for us to understand right so stay tuned okay so here in this video we are going to show you very first image uh, that is you have seen it previously also i think so but these images are readily very important when you talk about molecular genetics so here in molecular genetics you are seeing some viruses the very first is vaccinia virus second is herpes viruses uh, then rhabdo virus then we have t even coliphage right so then flaxious tail phase that we have and then papilloma virus and at the last we have one most uh, virus right so here in we are seeing various type of viruses so the very first question that arises is that Virus morphology is a bit different from each other. If you see here in, you are seeing traits that are being different, right? In genomic manner, we call this uh, physiology as a trait. So why does virus have such a difficult, as uh, such a different trait, right? So to understand this, you must understand what is virus, how does it work, and all those uh, prospects. So we'll talk about these we can say molecular details in at the uh, we can say mid of the video but at this moment we are going to define what is a virus and how does it differ from uh, we can say its uh, cousin brothers or sisters whatever they are so there are virons virides there are prions so we'll talk about them also in, uh, in this moment only right so herein you are seeing some viruses right so what are viruses Look, viruses, defining viruses is very, very easy task. Uh, how to make it easy? Let me tell you. You take, you go to your biochemistry laboratory, take a bit of protein in your hand, if you have that, if, you're, you, if you are seeing it in NMR spectroscopy or anything, uh, have a bit of protein, use any nucleic acid, whatever you want, DNA, RNA, and just coil that DNA, uh, we can say make it in a type of plasmid or anything and just put that DNA into that protein case what case case you have made right once that DNA is in that protein inside the protein then you can name it as a virus and the surprising thing is that you can actually build a virus how just take protein and form some uh, by, uh, a bit of structure that, that structure that you want to want would be irregular or any type of structure that you want to uh, build off but you have a we can say if you have an imagination of a structure of protein in which you just encaps the uh, or you can say capsule the uh, lock the genome whatever genome you have you may have a genome of strawberry you may have a genome of a plant you may have a genome of animal eukaryote prokaryote just uh, we can see just lock that genome into that encapsulated uh, protein that you have formed in the laboratory and you can get easily a viral cell. But 
would it function like a virus it would not function and, and it would function also Th that doesn't matter but the main thing is to define viruses we have only two components one is protein another is nucleic acid you may build a virus do not have any cellular we can say organelle or anything do not have any nucleus nothing it is just a tiny prokaryote made up of two things protein and rna or dna whatsoever it has right particularly when we talk about viruses there are certain viruses that would have uh, ds dna that doesn't matter but various viruses has either ss dna that is single standard dna or they can, they would have a ds rna or ss rna that doesn't matter but here in what you see in the images is are various traits of viruses if you see here in this trait you are having a virus that is a cellular morphology they have just opened the cell and shown uh, so you will see here in the encapsulated uh, genome they are not likely to show that there are enzymes in the in the lumen of the protein and you can see it right yeah. over here if you see herpes virus so herpes virus is having somewhat uh, you can you can think like a clathrin ball over here clathrin ball from the outside and inside the isocedron uh, we we call this structure as isocedron we'll talk about why we call it isocedron later because it has uh, we can say 12 rectangular uh, faces and we can say uh, 20 about 20 uh, the structure of morphology consists of 20, 12 into 20 we can say triangular faces right so here in if you see if you can see this herpes virus this is uh, made up of somewhat uh, protein coated uh, around uh, isocedron right this isocedron is made up of we can say proteins only if you see here in you have uh, rahab do viruses so if you see here what is rahab do virus rahab do virus is a kind of we can say uh, protein that consist of a nucleic acid from inside that is somewhat irregular type of we can say wall of the protein you can see over here then over here you can see here in t even coliphase a t even coliphase is a bacteriophage is a kind of bacteriophage this is a typical bacteriophage uh, that we call uh, t even or Uh, we have one more kind of bacteriophage that we call lambda right so here in when you see t even coliphage you have isocedron uh, if you see here in you are having a spring type of structure that we call a protein and beneath that you have somewhat uh, we can say it as fork we can say a fork nails in, uh, beside the spring type of we can say lumen wherein the uh, d gene that is inserted into the uh, cell which is targeted to right so this is a typical bacteriophage if you see here in you have flexus tail phase so various various we can say morphological differences you can see here in in the image of these viruses or prokaryotes what they are right now let's go to another image and see what are another major differences between these viruses Okay, so here in you have a uh, encapsulated virus that we call as tobacco mosaic virus. So if you see our here in the virus is just uh, the RNA is encapsulated in, in somewhat capsule type of structure that readily we call also capsule, right? And we call the whole cellular morphology as a viron, right? Now the question arises that what is the difference between viruses, prions, and viroids, right? so the major difference between viruses and prions is that virus is a kind of machinery which is having a protein inside capsule uh, we can say rna or dna or whatever the nucleic acid is that doesn't matter okay so genome is been encapsulated in the we can say capsomer right these are the capsomers that we call as a capsule inside the genome is been inserted so this is a typical uh, we can see structure of a uh, tobacco mosaic virus right okay so uh, i was about to tell you that viruses are of two types one is capsule one is uncapsuled so if you see here in the influenza virus that is that are the virons that are uh, nucleic acid are been encapsulated in the capsule this this is called as a nucleocapsid right so nucleocapsid has somewhat spikes Th these uh, outcomings are known as spikes and a protein core uh, that is protein we can say shell type of structure that we call as influenza viruses right 
and we will talk about genomic detail in a bit later right so another morphology that we have is of isocerdal adenoviruses adenoviruses is somewhat you can see isocerdon shape isocerdon shape is somewhat you can see normal shape of any bacteriophage whatever we are talking about any viron if if found somewhat uh, and the i can say that 70% of the population of virons are being isocerdal if you see here in the spikes are coming out from the isocerdon capsule if you see here in so these are encapsed we can say viruses that are uh, having uh, inbuilt rna or dna whatsoever they have encapsed in their isocerdon shell from outside right okay so you have here in uh, vaccinia viruses now vaccinia viruses are somewhat you can say a uh, membrane inside that you have a core in which you have somewhat we can say nucleic acid inside a lumen we call that a type of nucleus but not readily a nucleus so because this is a virus would not have a nucleus so we call just it as a envelope uh, that is given to the nucleic acid that's it uh, that we call as a core membrane right so here in the lateral body so if you can see here in the diagrammatic that is chromatogram the the figure is shown readily containing dna right so this is a kind of vaccine virus we call it now the main structure comes what we are tend to talk in this video what is the main topic of this video is a kind of virus we call them bacteriophage and this is t4 phase that is actually a cause of lytic cycle not lysogenic lytic cycle in Escherichia coli if you see here in they are having a nucleocapsid uh, in which nucleic acid is there in and they are having a collar and they are having a spring shelf we, we can call it spring shelf right they have somewhat legs and they have a tail type of uh, structure keep in mind that this structure is going to help you a lot during this video or during your msc bsc whatever you are doing in any subject this structure is one of the structure that is actually associated with disease causing bacteria so keep remember this subject in your mind keep it we can say make a note of it if you can uh, pause this video and draw this diagram on your copy or every, anywhere wherever you want just have a brief look on the diagram again i am repeating that this is the isocyadron head wherein it is having a genome so genome is encapsed into isocyadron and after the genome is encapsed they have a collar and they have a shelf shelf is a kind of spring that is actually used to create a vacuum vacuum to create uh, why they have to create a vacuum because here in the genome should be we can say passed on to or we can say transfer to the cell where the infection is ought to be brought to right right so here in the legs legs are somewhat uh, to make stability of the cell at the uh, we can say the wall or peptidoglycan layer of uh, the bacterial capsid or we can say that the legs are actually tend to keep it stick with uh, whatever body it want to right eukaryotic cell prokaryotic cell protozoan it, it may stick to Escherichia coli it may stick to any of the individual just the thing to remember is that this is the virus that causes diseases or this uh, this is the virus that actually does mutation uh, from one generation to another generation t4 phase and one more virus is there that we are naming it lambda right so these are two viruses that we call as a bacteriophage and they uh, actually tend to we can say infect bacteria only and infection is very very we can say very very dangerous for uh, bacteria to survive okay so it is here in rahabdo viruses uh, that is a rabies virus very first one th uh, this is the rabies virus rahabdo virus a kind of rahabdo virus and this is a herpes virus so here also you can see enveloped spikes are there outside and inside the lumen the nucleic acid is just floating like anything and here also you can see the same thing that uh, envelope is outside glycoprotein envelope with the spikes with the tagomant area with the nucleic acid floating inside uh, some red region that they have shown right so this is a herpes virus this is a rabies virus and these are both are uh, actually a kind of rahabdo virus right so specifically we attribute them under we can say what rahabdo virus okay 
So this diagram is very very important if you want to understand how does virus live and all those things. To culture virus in the egg where th we culture them, we need to culture our meat or blood wh wherever we want to culture or conky agar. So if you want to culture them, we need to remember this diagram. How does bacterial life cycle have five steps? Look here in. What are the five steps? The very first we call as a latent period. So this this is a kind of a line that we are showing is latent period, and after that there is a rise period. This or one of the type of loop that you are seeing is a rise period. So it is a eclipse. Eclipse is somewhat the area wherein the uh, back virus virus is tending to we can say grow uh, is uh, preparing to grow right so this is the growth period wherein it has to grow and this is the burst period wherein you are seeing the red uh, uh, we can say red line uh, fully straight wherein the population is somewhat uh, we can say excessive or somewhat increased uh, at times that should not increase like right so this is a phase count of what say with uh, with contrast to the time so this this is a graphical representation of one step gr growth curve right so this is a one step growth curve of viral life cycle okay so let's see how does bacteriophage work and how does uh, it just creates a cell that is a disease cell that we said right so if you see here in uh, we can say it a papilloma virus so uh, here the papilloma virus has came and sh uh, has just we can say sit on the wall of cell th that may be a plasma membrane of eukaryotic cell Th we call it a human cell for now now because human papilloma virus so that's why human cell so you can see here in the capsid is somewhat inserted in into the lumen of the cell uh, and you can see here in the genome is being excreted out of the cell uh, of the isocedron uh, we, we can see it right after that the third step is the once the uh, genome is been inserted it tend to replicate using cells replication processes it may be a uh, dsdna or rs uh, or rna right that doesn't matter but cellular functional enzymes will be used by the virus to tend to grow inside the cell uh, for example because uh, isocehedron do not have this isocedron structure do not have any virus of itself. It do not have RNA polymerase, DNA polymerase or anything. It only the thing that it has is a nucleic acid. That's why viruses used to grow in any host, we can say like that. Because viruses do not grow by themselves or do not, we can say, reproduce by themselves. They need a host cell to live in wherein they can inject their DNA and their genome then can, uh, we can say, uh, transcribe and translate the protein which uh, will form new isocedrons and once new isocedron are formed the nucleic acid will be encapsulated by certain protein are used over there we will talk about later but for now once this isocedron has been created the dna will be packed or rna whatsoever it is it will be packed in the isocedron and released from the cell released from the lumen of the cell by lytic cycle so if you see here in the isocedron is being released if you see here in the lytic cycle is being shown soon the cell burst a bit and then uh, released all the isocedral viruses uh, this we call as a papilloma viruses right now the question that arises is uh, once viruses has uh, we can say uh, created say what uh, they have replicated they have created their uh, isocedron or any shape whatever they want so here in uh, we are showing a typical virus right uh, whatever the virus influenza virus we, we call it influenza virus so virus is having a circular structure with the spikes so why does it need spikes okay so we have not made up till now any video on cell signaling but uh, a topic to be known is cell signaling for to understand the role of spikes in the we can say shell or outer membrane of any uh, viruses so here in we uh, we can see th th there is a capsid protein inside the lumen of this whole we can say a round circle uh, shell uh, which is having spikes on outside spikes is somewhat working as a liagent if you see here in in the wall plasma membrane or whatever it is uh, in the wall of the cell 
at the wall of the cell there are receptors if you see here in the uh, receptors are somewhat curved from upside a cup type of structure that uh, there in the spike are inserted right once spike are inserted it causes somewhat conformational changes in the cellular morphology or plasma membrane which consist of ip3 uh, right ip3 signaling molecules uh, inbuilt in this we can say phosphatidyl in a stall right inbuilt in this plasma membrane once ip3 by g proteins uh, there are many more we can say alpha beta gamma units and then they will we can say phosphorylate using kinase and once signal is created the kinase will tend to uh, we can say uh, alpha will be released from beta gamma and it will uh, bind to the we can say receptor or we can say a uh, uh, regulatory protein that will regulate the uh, synthesis of ip3 inside the lumen or uh, ras or any protein that that it want to mapk proteins and once these all processes uh, ip3 protein has been released into the lumen of the cell it will create some signaling uh, processes inside the cell that will uh, bind to the endoplasmic reticulum release out calcium once calcium is released signal signal is been we can say uh, captured by the vesicles and the cell is budded in south uh, um, cell is budded inside the plasma membrane and once budded it will create a vesicle and bound vesicle will straight away go to the nucleus try to infect the cellular functioning so here in what we are trying to say say is that spikes are a kind of liagen which tend to bind to the receptors to create signals that would cause infections in the eukaryotic cell so now very easy see here in the spikes just bound this is these are the signaling protein that uh, actually came at the uh, we can say envelope or anywhere it is right the membrane now budded inside and once budded inside the receptors are ready now the process inbuilt process is working on for for the disease to transmit right okay so there is one more process of transfer but this is also similar wherein the endocytosis means endocytosis means the vesicle in the lumen of uh, we can say cytosol of any cell will be budded inside we have talked about endocytosis in our video of vascular transport wherein the main problem arises that lysosome inside the cell would degrade all the waste material so there are probabilities of the virus to not actually survive inside the cell but if survived if the genome of a virus is released in nucleus or anywhere would tend to be very very bad for any of the individual which has been infected by the viral genome right so this is also one of the problem okay so here in you can see the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum uh, combined with the nucleus and the vesicles you can see here in so once the genome has inserted its genome by lysogenic cycle or anything and uh, the genes will be transcribed inside the endoplasmic reticulum and will form a kind of vesicles and will be moved to the different positions in the cell and would create we can see worst effect that it could create right so it is just a very very we can say uh, difficult task for cell to survive if once these genomes are uh, translated right but if not translated or say maybe translated also cell are having their inbuilt enzymes working inside the cell that are working especially lysosome golgi apparatus these all are vascular traffics of the cell once the cell found that the protein is not appropriate at the position then it would it would directly degrade it or send it again back to endoplasmic reticulum there are chances to get infected but there are multiple more chances that cell would not get infected by any of the viral genome this is also one of the thing okay so say once cell got infected by any virus whatsoever it is we are showing here a bacterial phase so cell has been infected translation would result in very firstly prohad there is a prohad built then prohad the nucleus uh, nucleic acid whatever it is is packed inside then whiskers and neck are been joined all are been translated by ribosome proteins right so once the whole machinery is built the 
evil is ready the beast is covered inside the cell but once it is ready it would create such a enormous effects that would just we can say what would disrupt the machinery of cell right so we can say about this particular individual inside the cell is threat for cell uh, politics or cell politician to survive because uh, we know that head of cell is nucleus which is sitting as a king uh, over there once this individual has built itself inside the cell the population is inbuilt then it would degrade all the we can say organelles working inside the cell and would the cellular lysosome will degrade them because this evil is a kind of hypnotizing it is having a hypnotizing power it would mutate the genome of uh, the new uh, in the nucleus once the genome has been mutated then it would create the very very we can say dif disrupting or very very we can say uh, very very bad effects inside the cell and that would actually actually cell would not survive and if cell survived some ways cell would create infection or it would create this individual will create infections uh, on the cell in the cells that are just uh, we can say neighboring cells of the cell and one cell two cell three cell and then a tissue from one tissue to two tissue and in the same manner a disease has been caused in each and every uh, individual now thing to know is that in a gri human genome uh, research institute uh, that is uh, the worldwide institute um, by uh, established by the good work of sir watson right they have found something is that the diseases that are caused to dogs are very much similar to humans uh, viral diseases i am talking about and this is to be said because due to nsgri has been working from a uh, long era on uh, the genome of dog and the man or human and they found that dog genome was 97 or i think so 94 percent was very very much we can say a mirror image or we can say a similar very very similar to humankind so this would affect humankind in future the dog genome a disease caused to dog would infect human also in the same manner so these are also some of the things to remember and uh, everyone knows that dog is very very uh, we can say familiar member of human population but it causes if it bites to human it causes rabies also that is caused by rhabdoviruses so it is a vector that not that doesn't matter but nsgri report is very very we can say important for uh, human molecular genetic aspect because it uh, it is a kind of we can say work that is uh, research it is a kind of very good research to work on right so let's see next image now okay so same type of image with influenza virus again uh, budding inside the cell receptors is spike and all those things so do not talk i do not want to talk about it later uh, again sorry i do not want to talk about it again but uh, it is good one image is kind of good to understand the spikes and how does the receptor bind to the spike and it is budded inside now here and if you see uh, the influenza virus is having something that is different if you talk about l what we talk about uh, earlier is that the cell is kind of budded inside the lumen but here in if you can see influenza virus is kind of working like that that the coat that it is having the capsule that it is having is somewhat inserted into the plasma membrane and its genome is inserted into the cell but uh, influenza virus would not work readily appropriately because its genome would not create any effect in the cell up till up till uh, up till when it is not in the nucleus of the cell this is also one of the thing so if the genome is in the lumen of the cell say there are many organelles working in we can say correspondence in the cell there are lysozymes there are uh, various enzymes that would degrade the genome so it is not a kind of uh, we can say we should not get in, get threatened by this these type of genome but these are kind of threat when it 
once it infects uh, or we can say inserts its genome or mutates any RNA or DNA inside the lumen of uh, our we can say cell once say translated then it is a problem right okay so here in you can see lysos uh, lysogenic cycle lytic and lysogenic cycle there are two of the cycle wherein one cycle results in say what uh, the cell cell to burst and give birth to the new ones and one cycle is mutation cycle you can see here in the gene is being mutated and this cycle also tend to work not only on in bacteria it works in uh, eukaryotes also but eukaryotes bacteriophage would not work that appropriately because cell nucleus is the home of dna so it has to travel a lot to go up till dna and then uh, mutate it but there are chances when viruses used to mutate and that mutation would be appropriately caused in upcoming generation also means this is a inherited mutation a kind of inherited mutation that would lead to next generation to suffer this is also a problem uh, the thing to remember is that nhgri what i was talking earlier also that nhgri has uh, published one of its paper earlier by uh, i do not remember the name of the scientist but they have published the paper in which they see is that the cancer that is a disease by uh, caused by sarcoma virus retrovirus there are many viruses which cause there are many kind of cancer we will not talk about that now but the thing is that cancer that is caused are tend to uh, we can say about 40% of cancers that are caused to human population are due to viruses that infected the we can say uh, F1 or we can say parental generation right uh, somewhat uh, they have infected the we can say germ line of them and somewhat they have caused infection mutated their genome and now uh, that would lead to somewhat syndromes or anything that uh, doesn't matter but mutations are the main problem caused by viruses right so this video was a short video on virus next video would be a bit we can say different and big in which we are going to talk about how does this uh, all lysogenic lytic cycle work and what are the operon model of genomic discussion we will do some genomic discussion of how does virus infect human being even though we will discuss about how does the virus infect the bacterium right so guys do some likes right you are not giving likes properly and if you like this video please subscribe hit the bell icon jai hind jai bharat thank you